how Sammy Lee came b about. I certainly had to go and do a film test. I went and did a test and didn't hear anything for a long time and sort of put it out of my mind. Then suddenly my agent rang and said, they want you to do it. So, um, so that was how it happened. When I first read the script and realized that Patsy was this wonderful character, I mean vulnerable and all the things that I was as a person at that time, so I felt a great affinity with her. And interestingly, I started, and it was, I think it was the first time I did it, and it was something that I kept up all my career, was that I, I, I wondered to myself, where did she come from? What kind of house did she live in? What were her parents like? Where did she go to school? What colors did she like? What did she eat? You know, to build up a kind of three-dimensional character rather than just what you read on the, on the page. And I have a series of notebooks because after that, it, and it made me feel more secure playing the role, that I had this background, even though it was nothing to do with the actual film, but it, it gave me great confidence to know the character inside out and backwards. And I did it with every role I played after that. I first met Ken Hughes when I did the film test. He, he was there then, and I was scared to death. He was scary. He was a scary, a scary man. He wasn't user-friendly or anything, and he frightened me slightly. Ken was a director that was, he wasn't, he wasn't easy. He was quite scary, and I was quite intimidated by him, mainly because I was so inexperienced and so very young. But it's, it's really interesting. I could have murdered him. Years later, um, I met him and we were chatting and everything. And I, I was then in a position to say to him, you weren't really very kind to me. And he said, that was on purpose. He said, I wanted you to feel vulnerable all the time. He said, so I, I did it on purpose. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I've been very wary of people's behavior ever since. And I'm sure what he did was it worked perfectly because I did feel vulnerable the whole time. What with bedroom scenes and stripping scenes and one thing and another, I, I, it was a part that was going to make you feel vulnerable and frightened to start with. So the fact that he added to that and made me feel even more vulnerable um, was probably a good thing. I have to tell you one story which sums up Ken Hughes. Um, I had been told right from the very beginning that I didn't have to do the strip scene because they would get a body double in to do the, 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 that. So I, in my naivety, just said, fine, yes, lovely, okay, you know, whatever. I had, I think, been prepared to do it originally when I read the script. I thought, well, if this is part of the film, then you have to do it. When it came to it, the girl that was to be the body double appeared and was so awful and looked so dreadful and fat and ghastly that I said, I'll do it myself. And that, of course, sums up Ken Hughes because it was a great wheeze to get me to do it. Shut up. What's the matter? Can't you knock? Sorry, Jo. Sammy! Patsy. Mm. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I... Kids looking for a job. Oh, yeah. Anthony Newley was a joy. He was absolutely wonderful. He was kind to me, um, considerate, and um, absolutely fabulous. I, I, I mean, I've, I've thought about him I, I remained quite friends with him right up until when he died. Um, and I used to see him every now and again. He said, hello, John. <laughs> he was, uh, so he, he, was, he was lovely. He made life a lot easier on the film set than it could have been. The character of Sammy, like a lot of those films that were being made in the early 60s, the sort of kitchen sink dramas, as they were, were, were called, um, 
was an interesting and new way of approaching things. Um, it didn't appeal to everybody, but I, I, I think it was, it was something new and something um, that people were interested in, the anti-side of people rather than the good side of people. When you think back to the films that were made in the 40s and 50s, you know, sort of beautiful and beautifully dressed and beautifully spoken, it was a, it, it was a dramatic shift. Um, and I think it was um, just the interest of people to see something different. I was sort of absolutely in awe of him and did everything. And he kept, he, I can remember him clapping me on my shoulder saying, I'll make you look lovely. <laughs> he was absolutely wonderful and brilliant at what he did, especially in those days when it was all new, this kind of black and white or not black and white but um, this kind of new way of shooting of reality and you know not making everybody look perfect you know so I was in awe of him I thought he was wonderful I suppose this was your bloody clever idea she wasn't wanted it? to do it oh sure I mean you talked her into it oh grow up again for god's sake you're acting like she's a 12 year old schoolgirl or something they're all dirty, aren't they, Jerry? They're all dirty. Look, Sam, any girl who takes her clothes off for a living is an oar. And I don't care whether she's your girlfriend or what she is. If that's what she does, she's a blasted oar. I think the film received the success that I and everybody at the time thought that it should have. I mean, a lot of people were quite picky about it. Two reasons. One is that Anthony Newley was not everybody's cup of tea. You either liked him or hated him. And there were a lot of people, he wasn't taken completely seriously at the time. He'd done a lot of lightweight musical type things. So for him to suddenly try and be, I thought very successfully, um, a serious actor in a serious role, I think people didn't quite understand it. And it was also one of the first of this new wave of films. And I think people didn't quite know what to make of it. It wasn't like you, you went out and had a wonderfully entertaining evening. You were made to think and suffer a little bit. So I, I think that's why the effect of this film on my career was absolutely enormous. Suddenly I was, I'd done a couple of uh, quite good films and played little tiny roles, um, but this sort of started me going uh, on a, you know, more serious level. And it had an enormous influence on all the things that came later, like Alfie and Half a Sixpence and all those other films. So it was very important. In retrospect, looking back, I think it was wonderful. Um, I think uh, it was the beginning of that wonderful anti-hero, working class, gritty, real movies of the early 60s and later 60s with um, Saturday Night, Sunday Morning, Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, you know, all those wonderful films. And I think it stands up very well. I thought it, I thought it was terrific. And the cast was so wonderful. Robert Stevens was fabulous, Miriam Carlin and Warren Mitchell, and everyone was fabulous, and I was really proud to be in it. When I think back to it, I have wonderful memories of it. Um, and Anthony Newley was fabulous. But uh, anyway, I, th I think it was a, a, a really good and interesting film to be in. And I couldn't be, couldn't be happier that I have done it.